Okay, again. Um, back to mold making. So we did a. Uh, my hair looks bad in this picture. Oh. Um, <laughs> hey, look, I had a mask on. All right, we're uh, we were working on case molds. Um, we've done a whole lot of molds this week. I think I'm on nine molds in six days. Uh, so we've been multitasking, son of a gun, um, a mold or two a day, um, or at least portions therein. So now we're kind of finishing some of them. We've had three of them. And we've even cleaned the shop. Oh, and we've cleaned the shop. We rearranged a whole ton, made our lives a bit better. Um, hopefully I got some better angles for you guys if we're doing these videos so you can watch um, and see some more of the molds better. Um, so we rearranged a bunch. Um, I'll show you in a in a sec because it's kind of cool to see. Uh, Alright, so today we're going to take and open a couple of these molds. Um, there's a few that aren't totally ready, um, but there's uh, the other five that are sitting on the bench still here. You guys are like seeing one of them I know is going to come out great because I got anxious and I had to open it earlier. Um, I couldn't wait a whole lot longer. <laughs> I couldn't wait for the doing this to you guys later tonight, but we'll show you that. The next one we still have to pour a silicone in and that will finish that mold out. Um, so you'll see that, and we'll have some fun with molds again. All right, let's see what we got going on here. I just did, I, I'm sorry I'm late for what I posted earlier. Um, I wanted to get all the cutting done on this mold before I started this so you guys didn't just listen to me do, uh, you know, cutting. It's kind of boring. Here's what we got. We put a new bench in, just kind of made a new bench. We had an extra steel top table laying around. Um, so here's a couple of our molds. These are the ones we've been working on all week. Um, these are the two boiler pipes. Yes, they look like birthday cake, and yes, it feels like a cooking show. Um, I mean, a pot, stainless table, you know. Um, so these are the two molds. Um, they're just about done and ready to kind of peel out. Um, there's some of it that's a little sticky, so we may not open those two tonight. Um, some of the stuff that it kind of leaked out the side that tells me that some of the core stuff inside there isn't all the way kicked yet. Um, it really needs 24 hours at least. It got really cold and temperature changed, so we're probably not good to pull those out for at least three to six hours. So I want to give them away. We'll do them tomorrow. Um, we did this head. This is the back. Um, there was the front. So we'll do that. We've got the wrench mold that you guys have seen start to finish, so I will... Uh, We've now got half of it poured, um, and it feels good enough that we can take and pull the second side, and there was the axe mold. So the axe mold's actually ready for us to open. I'm going to show you that. Let me, uh, we'll do that in a little bit. These two won't work, um, and let's see if my new created spot here actually works. Um, so you can watch some of this. Yeah, you can see it from above. We can also switch it back to the side. Um, but I'm going to open this mold up. Um, hey, I can still plug in my phone here. Nice. Conceptually. A little harder to do when it's way up over your head. And phone falls. That's why I have an industrial sized case. Okay. Alright. So we're up there. We're going to take and peel this mold out. See if we can't get this guy out. Because um, he'll take some cleaning. It's going to be a bugger. And... We'll keep mold making. It's that run to Transworld now, so we're finishing up a handful of things while we do all the other stuff. So we got a whole lot of stuff going on. Now, this one's a little heavy. So we're going to see if we can't get her to pop out. Uh, tried to make my life a little easier and get all the stuff I need for doing the molds all right around the mold table. Probably going to need a couple of pry bars. This is a great pry bar. It's a little crooked. Harbor Freight. I like Harbor Freight. Meant to go there this morning. I forgot. They had a big, they had a big tent sale today, too, and I missed it. Probably could have saved some money. I know. All right, where's that scraper you were using? There's one. Probably going to need a couple. I can find the other ones. I got two and did you find one of the rubber mallets? Yep. All right, we're gonna start peeling it. Just like we did before, I'm gonna use the flooring spacers. 
um, as much as I can so I can get the space right. If you want to grab the other... Uh, So when we're peeling this, we just kind of put a pl bear, uh, screwdriver in, turn it, it'll make the gap big enough to get our uh, one to the thicker side of this in, and then walk all the way around. And once it gets all the way around, it kind of usually helps pop itself, um, and I don't have to worry about breaking my fiberglass, hopefully. Yeah, it did. I think it's under here. I think it's under this table. We're kind of lost in the shop today because we decided we had to clean. Yeah. We had to clean, so we uh, reorganized, everything. reorganized everything, and now we can't find anything. You know, exactly the way cleaning works. This one's popping pretty well. Yeah, it's doing good. You can just hear it start to crinkle. As long as you're not giving it too much force, it's not going to break that fiberglass. That's what we like. Haha, -ha, sweet. This corner is actually going to be a little tough because of the curve, but yeah, we'll hit that next, the resin side. And then we have resin on the bondo. That's going to be a little rough too. Let's see if I can get one into the side. Vaseline in there, yay! Always live it up. It's not a good thing about working on these old too. I don't need any more. Get this part or something. We got it. We got it. We got it. Popping. We popped it. Got the back to pop off. And it looks pretty good. We did a major cleaning today. And it was like we were cursing ourselves out the whole time because we're going to run to Transworld. We don't have the time to stop. we got so much to do. Let's do it. We're going to regret it if we don't. Life's going to suck. Check it. Oh. Might as well cut that now. Now this one's got a lot of detail in the base that means we're going to have to do a bit of cleaning on this silicone, but... Ah. We should take story time with the watch. <laughs> yeah. Coming down. We did pretty good. Now that you got most of the clay out. Um, I'll put it back in the fiberglass shell so you guys can just see it for entertainment value. It's held in there pretty good. Um, and even vertically, it's not popping anywhere, so that's awesome. I'm sure Becky will get some water to clean that while she leaves me to fight the son of a gun side. I'm kidding. I got to go to hell and die, look. Hey, Koi made it just in time for the fun part. Ah, I just got I just got bad dog sprayed. Okay. Uh, Put the hammer down. It's probably a good sign. It's a good thing for me. Too much flex. 
too much plaque. Sorry, dude. Hold it up. Let me see if I can get it over this side. Because we're, it's because we're, uh... The shoulders. Yeah. I can't get into that side. Thanks for coming. Okay. We got, the, we got the shell. I get this side up. Okay. That's good. I ain't even gonna go far with this. Yeah, I don't even know. Schlangel! It sounds a lot more intense on this. I know it. Because <laughs> this isn't as solid as ever. It just made it an action tutorial. Yes. gonna come out and look good. And it seats well into here. Alright. Bad nose. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna get this one, including the lollipop, out of the way. Ah! ah. That was the uh, third of those three heads. All right, Danny joined us too. Hey, Danny joined. All right, are we dinner theater for Danny? That's right, dinner theater. So we uh, got that mold out. Needs a bunch of cleaning still, but we could start pulling a copy of that. I don't know in an hour or so when we get that done. Maybe. Um, now I know a bunch of you want to see this one. So, my axe mold, I gotta do a little cutting on it. I'm gonna do that while we're here in a second. Put my gloves back on. Get ready to put my mask on. Um, so, this one, for those who remember, is the double headed axe. Um, let's see if I can make this more sense to the camera. Here we go. Um, it's the double headed axe. Um, so, I already peeled this off because I was too anxious, so you guys get to see it. Um, there is, in essence, the mold of the double-headed axe. So I still need to do a little trimming here, which I'm going to do in just a second. Then all we're going to have to do to pull one of these is take a, get an axe handle. As long as the end of the tip is pretty similar to that, it'll fit right in. We'll take and uh, snap the two together, bolt it down, pour foam in that end, and then, uh, voila, mallet. Um, we already have a foam handle. Uh, matter of fact, I've, this one's very similar. It would work. It's a purple one, but um, it would actually fit in at this width. Cut that tip off and just shove the foam piece in there. And then uh, you would have a full foam handle and end. We do it both ways. Um, so just kind of walking you back through what we did and use this as a summary case for you guys. Um, what we originally did was made clay and completely covered the axe in clay. Okay, and when we did that, it looked something like this. Okay, so we covered it in clay in that shape. 
So this was clay over the X. We then made a shell over that. Then we flipped it, which now the clay on the one side was in the shell still, right? So when we flipped it, that was clay, and this was here. Then on this side, it's kind of interesting to see, I think. I think that'll work for uh, explaining this. On this side, we did the same thing. We made a second clay right on top of the other one, then made a shell, then we flipped it. This time we opened it up. We, you know, have it, however you want to look at it. We had it like this. We took all the clay off. Okay, we just put the shell back on, so there's nothing now in the gap, and we poured silicone into the gap. And that in turn makes this piece. And this piece, you know, you can see the chambers we did, and they're never perfect, but I'm happy with that. It's not going to affect at all the quality of the axe head or the shape because it's quite thick enough. Um, and this piece will, like, literally snap in to that fiberglass shell so it won't come out. Whereas if I shook real hard on that head mold that doesn't have the mold straps because it was a brush up, in this one, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, same with the other side. I'll show you a small problem that was on this one, which again won't matter to the mold. I don't know that we'll ever fix it, but we could. Um, oh no, it was this one. Uh, there was one little section that I probably vented in the wrong spot when I when we drilled our holes. Um, yeah, here it is. So I've got a small air bubble in the mold strap. It's literally just this chunk. Okay, and so however it was sitting. Right when we were pouring it, that just caused an air bubble in there. So I could drill another hole in the mold right there and fill it if I wanted to. You know, rip off the little flap. I don't know if you can see it. If I rip off this flap, um, I could drill a hole and pour more. But it's not going to uh, matter, so I'm probably never going to do it. I'll probably forget it's ever there and find it five years from now and go, Wow, I was an idiot. Why did I not fix that? Uh, but so we snap these two pieces in. Um, I'm not going to snap this one in here because I want to cut it real quick. You guys can just I try. Well, so good news and bad news. Um, the cool magnet that holds my phone does not stick to my new case. And I need a new screen protector. Okay. <laughs> I could use that one up there. Yeah. Um, let's switch. Let's switch sides. Yeah, we can do it off this side. This will work. Um, I think. Okay. Uh, you got those in bulk, though, don't you? Yeah, I buy those in bulk. I got two more on my desk. I just can't switch it while I'm recording, so I'm not gonna. Okay. Put your mask on. Put this beside. Ah, it's eating. Okay. I'll be back. All right. I'm only cutting two pieces. Well, I'm just So that's done. Baby wet. And I just itched my nose. Of course I did. Where did we hide the baby wipes from myself? Again. There we are. So we have to go through a lot of these. Alright. Um, I got a pair of scissors and I can trim that out a little more. I got a few furry pieces. These are not rock hard, but they'll annoy me. Alright. Now though, this one is going to be ready for us to pour here in another day or so. 
mostly when I remember to stop by the store and pick up more axe handles. Um, and it should snap all the way in, flush. And uh, just to show you a little more here, um, the uh, silicone snaps right in, and then it's got a groove line, and the other one has the bump. So when I pop these two together, it's a nice good industrial mold, and we bolt it up. It'll fit perfectly and seam in. I know you probably can't see a whole lot in there, but you can see my fill hole, you can see a nice good seam, um, and it's going to look really, really good. So that's the uh, magic of my uh, axe head case mold. So this axe is now done and given back to the guy who loaned it to us. Um, so that's going to happen. Might set one up there. Alright. Should work. Now, one thing I'm definitely going to do before I get anywhere else is bolt this thing together. Mostly because I don't want to lose the two pieces or have the silicone fall out and have someone hurt it. I'm not actually going to put all of the bolt pieces in. Um, but I'll put, you know, three or four of them in. Again, if you're using an impact or some strong, you want to learn to stop before you start cranking into the fiberglass. Because the molds are pretty resistant, but as with anything, you go hit it with a sledgehammer and it's in essence what this is doing. Um, you want to stop before it gets to good problem. So as soon as I get that first click, I'm done. As soon as I feel it tight. Really, these ought to need to be just really good hand tightened. Not anymore. But so there's my uh, axe mold. And we can move it aside. It'll be ready to pull. Alright. So we were working on this one too. The wrench. Now, with this one, same thing as I just explained with the axe, we did, again, it's a poured case mold of the socket wrench, and I've, we've only thus far poured one side of silicone. So, I'm going to pour the other side of silicone, and see if I can change this angle of this clip Your slightly. Back under the table. There you go. Huh? Your scale's back under the table. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll need it. Um, so, I've got to open this up now, because this is where I poured silicone flip it, clean the clay off, put it back on so I have a gap, and then we'll pour silicone on this one. Hey Garrett, Garrett Zima man, how you been? Dolls have been looking good. What do you say? Chucky dolls have been looking good. Yeah, his Chucky dolls have been awesome. He's having a lot of fun. I like Garrett, he's a good guy. So this side I haven't drilled yet, that side doesn't have silicone, we're going to see if we can't get it to pop off without letting the wrench come out of the silicone, because that'll help break the seal, and it's a real bugger if we do it. And wow, I made that perfectly a better angle, and it's crooked as all get out. <laughs> if I can make that a lot better. That's not as crooked. Trying the new positions, we'll get it out and I'll find a better sticker for my phone so the phone does not fall aimlessly from the sky and land on my head again. Although I'm sure that was entertaining to some of you. Yeah, Becky left. Now I know this one's going to be a bit of a bugger to unsnap apart here, so forgive me if I stab myself or curse, because uh, that can also happen. Because we had a lot of trouble trying to get these 
two sides to pop when we did this um, because of the fiberglass resin we used. We actually ran out of the 10 gallon we'd ordered to have in stock and used for the last things. So we had to, and I had to order more, but we had to run up to the Lowe's version of fiberglass resin is creppy and was gooey and made a nice hard L over here that made it a bugger. It works. I mean, the mold will be strong enough, but it sure as heck is tough to peel out. Alright, there we go. So now I'm literally just walking through, trying to get it to pop out and see if I do my best. I'm going to put this back in a sec because I want that spot. Aha, uh -huh, good. That'll help. Let's get this pipe out instead. There we go. So, from what you saw the first time, tell me. Huh? <laughs> I think you need a water table. Water table? Yeah. I'm getting good at that. I do. <laughs> um, so, you can tell by just looking at these two pieces in this scenario exactly what's going on. We got the two seams, poured the silicone, or did clay on both sides just like this, cleaned out one side poured the silicone in it. Now we're going to clean all the clay off this side, clean all this clay out, put it back in as holes, pour silicone, and then we'll have the two-piece case mold around the silicone. Um, so I did something really a little, I don't normally do it, but I had to, in my opinion, do it on this one in order to get a nice square edge because I want to reduce how much pain we're going to have when we pull these and we make copies with the seam line. Um, and the trick to reducing the seam line is a, in case mold, you have a real good case mold that's built well. It's thick enough so it doesn't have a whole lot of pressure, but that you get a very square edge. Okay, so I actually dug in a little and made a nice square edge, so I'm going to end up with a real good, like, block here, and the next piece is going to square over it. So it's locking in. So I literally took a line of a screwdriver that's got a nice 90 degree angle on it, um, and just slid down the whole thing. And if, I sh if you look at this, you can kind of see, um, let me hold it up closer to the camera, but you can't see. Um, and I'm out of light. Yeah, I'm going to have to move my camera angles. Um, let's do it this way. Right. So you can see what I did if I kind of zoom in close. I made a nice square edge along the wrench. And so it left a, a step, is the only way I can describe it. It left that step around there. Usually I just do a groove around to lock the two. In this case, so that I double whammy, got a nice square edge, and I got a nice spot to seam, so these two pieces are gonna fit together really well. Um, and now we've got a great wrench mold. So we're gonna get this side cleaned out, Get all the clay out. I'll drill the holes on it. Um, we're going to get this side all cleaned up, get the clay away without taking the wrench out of the silicone because I want those two to stay sealed as long as I can until um, I pulled the other half of the silicone in it uh, so that I don't have silicone bleed over from one side to the other side. Now this side's been seated in real good in clay and we want to now for now therefore let it sit really good. <laughs> in the silicone yep. so I don't have to fight with cleaning up any extra seams before we start pulling them up. So. Um, you can also see, I do a little cleaning, um, it's going to be easier to show up, probably a little tighter, but um, I've got the silicone block here, which makes that mold strap, kind of matches this side that runs around. Hey Michael! So there's one here. There's one here, and there's one here. B 
because it was long and skinny, if I held the mold, I didn't want the mold or the silicone to droop. Um, and so by putting the mold straps in, I'm going to keep that from happening, hopefully. I'm pretty sure. But I still say hopefully because you never know for a fact until you pull the first one out. So I'm just kind of getting the big stuff out of the way. Um, and I decided when we were doing this, so I'm sure someone's going to ask if they haven't already, why is the center of my socket full of clay still? Well, I decided for the look that doing this relatively skinny ring around the base was just going to get ripped by an actor or something. So I wanted to give it a little more strength, so we filled this in on this end. Um, and we'll, before we go do it the other side, we got nice and smooth um, and got that silver all exposed so that we uh, still get the same basic look, but I don't have to worry about it breaking as easily on that end. So that's, we're about three quarters done with this. All we have to do is clean this, drill the holes in that, flip it, pour the silicone in it, which we will do tonight before I'm done, um, and then uh, wait 24 hours and that mold will be done. So that's the hard part. All right, so the other two that I'll do, let me go put these, here's all the nuts and bolts for the head. Thank you. Now the other two, my birthday cakes, uh, these are the boiler pipes. So a little bit leaked out in one spot, um, you can tell here. Um, looking at it, it still feels a little tiny bit soft to me. They both kind of do. Um, so I'm, we're opting not to pull them yet. Plus the little bit that leaked this morning is still like soft and tacky. What that means is because it's so thick, the middle stuff's probably the same way, a little soft and gooey. So instead of pulling it and even risking it, we're just going to wait a day. Um, waiting a day is a much smarter choice. Um, all right. Yeah, that light's not going to work. It's just blinding them. It's almost worse. I think, you know, it's worth a shot. You can get it out. Yeah, all right. I need this pipe to not go away. Although I want to clay those. Mr. Studio up tomorrow. Yeah, we could do we could we could do a whole bunch of we'll get some better lighting in here and make it easier on you guys. Um, all right, so when they get done clean that head out, we'll work on these. I probably can clean a chunk out real quick. Are we really that far out of scrapers? What are you looking for? Scraper. I don't know more than one. Yeah. We put them somewhere we wouldn't lose them. Well, and then we lost them. And then somebody else moved them. I can just run it back. Uh, check in the drawer. Uh, someone might have put it in that drawer with the other stuff. Yeah. That's where the plastic things are. Mm -hmm. right. So, Michael, did you have a good weekend? do a whole lot of clay reclaiming. We do some. Some of the really good mold that hasn't been chewed up or destroyed by resin or something, we'll keep in bags and uh, use it for add-ons of the next sculpt. Uh, so the time to reclaim is just more than it was worth to us. I was not sure everyone what we use to reclaim clay. Maybe there's others that want to. Let me get some of the chunk of this out real quick. Because we can get to that now after cleaning. Alright. So, 
Again, in this case, I'm not worried about scraping the mold, or I sure as heck would not be using a metal blade. Um, but all that this mold is going to see is silicone on that side, so I can, that. I can make my life a little faster, so that's what we're doing. I see a couple of spots on this mold. I think I want to drum them before we fill it later. There's a couple of weird overhangs we can clean up. So although I'm sure you at home can't see this, there's a couple of overhang pieces where the bondo kind of, when we made the clay, maybe we had a gap under it we didn't catch or something. Um, being it's only going between this silicone and this silicone, what I don't want is the silicone I put here if we're ever taking it in and out to catch on a sharp edge. So I'll either take a, a like screwdriver and hand just kind of pop those chunks out if I can, um, or a much better scraper. Or I'll use a Dremel and Dremel it out. But either way it works, whatever, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. But I can get rid of some of the real sharp spots, A, for my fingers, and B, for the silicone, which is probably more important because I don't ever want to remake these. Uh, it makes things really easy. All right, yeah, I'll spend a minute and show you guys clay reclaiming. Um, you got some good props painted. Yeah, we got a bunch of props pulled this weekend. Um, I got a mover guy. I got a coming prop of mine. Okay. Here we go. So my clay, one of my clay cabinets. Plaster block. Which at the end of the day is we took a bunch of uh this is probably hydrocal. Um to, Huh? It is hydrocal. We took a basically a whole bag of hydrocal, or half a bag or whatever we had laying around, and we poured it in the bottom of a target bucket. Um, and made a nice big block of plaster. Now what we'll do is take uh, this plaster, we put it out in the sun, let it dry, you make sure it gets all the water out of it as much as you can. Now, when you have a bunch of extra clay, like everything I just scraped out of that mold that doesn't have goo on it, you can throw that in a bucket, out of water, make it a big peanut buttery soup. And um, once you got a peanut buttery soup, it's still globable, but it's pretty wet. And we'll just plop it up in piles all over the block. Um, leave it for six hours or a day. Go back and use a spatula and just keep flopping it over. Keep rotating it and letting the plaster suck out all that extra water until it's the right consistency for you of what you're used to using. Um, then put it in a bag and slam it on the ground until you get it to a square block again and you're good to go. So if you're diligent, which we're not, about just doing it every day and consistently doing a little bit of clay, you can save a little money in uh, clay reclaiming. So there's times where we have to do it. We're out of clay, can't get more clay, whatever. Um, and uh, you know, I get a head molds. We found a bunch of stuff in a few of these cabinets today. Um, so uh, yeah, that's clay reclaiming. That glorious takes a while. Here's the other stuff. We got lots of heads going on. Um, there's that one. We're gonna bring in uh, another. We've got another uh, thing to go molding, which is what we're gonna work on next. Um, and it's gonna be a very unique uh, understatement of the day. Yeah. Hey, Corey, if you can yeah. hear her, the scaling turned out amazing on the head of the statue of monster head thing. Uh -huh. And he will also, um, that means all cleaning. You're going to love it, and it means cleaning sucked. So she's uh -huh. uh, cussing out the scaling and drilling over it at the same time. It's beautiful. Time. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, still love it. So there's the wrench mold when they get that part done. <laughs> that with that because I'll need that for my silicone next. Right in Keep myself cleaned up. Alright. We'll have one student at the top of my list.
list if you want to do or not. There we go. Wrench. <laughs> I'll just stack those in there. All right, I'm going to go bring in this other big boy. Uh, you can help it down or... No, I can carry it in. Okay, we cleaned out everything out of the way, so I should be able to get through. Yes. Hold on, I need to recover my back. Uh, all for them? Yeah, no, that's okay. It wouldn't have been easy, any easier with two people. Alright, so this is going to be a bugger of a mold. Show it. Yeah. I'm going like to the, I'm gonna like what we do with the output. I'm liking this idea. Every time I say bugger? Yeah. It's like so all I have to do to keep you all night is say bugger a lot? Yeah, I know. Alright, so I'll rotate this so you guys can see it. Hold on, probably right. Rotate it the other way to do it. We've had this one. We go water every day. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we want that water Got a little bit of cracking from the weather. Got a little cold. Huh. But we'll be able to, to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. That should be pretty. I can't wait for you guys to see what weird things we do with this. Um, it's a neat idea. So there's really not much of a problem. Very little cracking. We got a little dimple here to clean. You may have to come help me clean up a couple of these spots, Becky. You know me with clay tools, I'll just nitpick and um, screw something up. Becky? Mm -hmm. Was that always missing this arm? Yes. Okay. I was gonna say that looks intentional. Yeah. It is, I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a heart attack moment if I did not break it though. Um, except we're not going to be able to re-seam this while I can fill this. So this one is not going to be pulled out of silicon because this is would be a really, really bad silicon. Um, so we're just going to do this one in a plaster coat, or I mean a uh, Bondo fiberglass shell. Um, now we're going to, I'll walk through the thought process, but we're going to have to do this one with a couple of pieces um, to make this work. Uh, uh, the back could be a one piece. I don't know that the front can. It's gonna have to be. Yeah, it's cold. Obviously, these. Yeah, the clay's pretty cold. These are kind of <coughs> straighter so that I can get them out of the mold later. Actually, I have to you do? Fine, we'll leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can leave. So, alright, I've been pondering this. I haven't looked at this one since we started those other seven heads we did. Um, if I two-piece it, I'm going to have a little bit of a undercut here. I got a little more, I got a little clay underfill into the elbow. Um, I'm going to have a pretty bad undercut here. But I could spend a minute and fill that in with clay, so that doesn't bother me. I kind of, in my head, even if I don't do it in purpose, in person, which I'm using my hand just so you guys can see, 
um, I draw a line to where I want my mold wall to be, and I start getting that in my head. Um, because that'll help me figure out, again, I'm picturing what would happen when I take this apart later. This is where the seam's going to be. Keep that in mind. You know, I'm trying to figure out where I want, and I redraw it a bunch of different times. Uh, We can do this in two pieces. Let's stay together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to use the 10 pound foam, not just budget, at least for some of the detail, and then we can budget back for it. About that, I probably blanked out a minute there. Tim Nickel. I don't go by this one. Maybe he'll, he's trying to drop off those panels for us. We might have to take a five minute break. Everyone. We'll finish getting this ready. I may try and get another light on this side so you can see it better. Um, change the light. That's the one we're going to take and get molded. So, for those of you that are there, um, give us about 5-10 minutes. I got uh, a bunch of stuff being delivered to another haunted house. I gotta go take a call. Um, and then we're going to clean up two cracks and I'll be back online in 10 minutes or so. So, see you in a sec.